Hello, in this presentation I'll give a vector-based method for computing barycentric coordinates of a point U. Unlike the previous method which used triangles, this method will be better suited for computer calculations. It will also work well in any dimension, not just dimension 2, and it's also robust in the sense that it will behave well even with small round-off errors in U. So let's draw the picture. And we have a triangle with vertices x, y, and z. And a point u, which I'm going to draw u as being inside the triangle, but in fact the same formulas and constructions work for u anywhere in the plane containing the triangle. We want to define some auxiliary vectors to help with the computation. So in particular, we'll take the vectors from x to y and from x to z, and I'll let e1 be the vector from x to y, and e2 be the vector from x to z. So in particular, e1 is y minus x, e2 is z minus x, and I'll further define a vector m which is perpendicular to E2 and has the same height above E2 as Y. And we'll also define the normal vector N pointing in that direction. So this gives us M is the component of E1 orthogonal to E2. And n is the unit vector in the same direction. So it's the unit vector m divided by the magnitude of m. And finally, we also want the vector f from x to u. And so f equals u minus x. So, as I said, the method is, is going to be robust. It'll involve some pre-computations with a somewhat complicated looking formula, and then just a dot product with f. In particular, it'll be robust in the sense of the, this, this vector-based method gives the barycentric coordinates of the point in the plane P, that's the plane P containing the triangle, that is closest to you. So, of course, if U is in the plane, then it just directly gives the very centric coordinates for U. The formulas are a little bit complex, so I'll put them on the next board. So we'll start by working out the formula for m. So remember, m is the component of E1 orthogonal to E2. So we'll get this by taking E1 minus the component of E1 parallel to E2. So we know how to do that. If E2 were a unit vector, it would just be E1 dot E2 times E2. But E2 may not be a unit vector, so now it's E1 dot E2 times e2 over the norm of e2 squared. Again, the numerator would be the correct formula for the component for the projection of e1 on v2, but if it's not a, if, if e2 are a unit vector, but if e2 is not a unit vector, we have to divide by its norm squared because there's two e2s in the top. We'll also write that in the notation e1 minus e1 dot e2 times e2 over e2 squared. Just to remind you, e2 squared means 
e2 dot e2, which is the magnitude of e2 squared. And then n is m over the magnitude of m. So it's the unit vector pointing that way. So now we're going to use the area formulas that I derived last time. And we'll say that the area of the triangle, D, is equal to, so it's 1 half base times height. And the base is going to be the magnitude of E2. So that's 1 half times the magnitude of E2. That's 1 half the base. And the height is n dot y. n is a unit vector pointing upward. All right, sorry, it's n dot e1. So that's equal to n dot e1. Stop product. And of course, that's equal to 1 half norm of e2 times m dot e1 divided by the magnitude of m. And that's the area of the whole triangle. Now, we also want to have another area, which is the area b. So the area of the space triangle is similarly, b is 1 half the magnitude of E2, that's the base, times the same formula, but with F instead of U1. So that's M dot F over the magnitude of M. And I see I left the F off the picture. There's the F. F was U minus X. So beta is then b over d so when we take b over d the one halves cancel out and the magnitudes of e2 cancel out and the magnitude of the m's cancel out so we're left with m dot f over m dot e. We just canceled out the common terms in b and d and we're left with this. Now we go for this formula with m. And so let's also, while we're doing this, we'll also clear the denominators here. So m dot f, well, let's leave it in. It's e1 dot f minus e1 dot e2 times e2 dot f divided by e2 squared. And the whole thing is over e1 dot e1. There should have been a 1 here, m dot e1, e1 dot e1 minus e1 dot e2 times e2 dot e1 divided by e2 squared. Okay, so now let's simplify this up a little bit more, if it's really simplification. Let's clear the e2 squareds out of the denominator. So I've got e2 squared, e1 dot f minus e1 dot e2 times e2 dot f over e1 squared times e2 squared. So here the e1 dot e1 is the same as e1 squared times the e2 squared minus e1 dot e2 
squared because e2 dot e1 is the same as e1 dot e2. And that's it for the denominator. So we can rewrite this as let's pull out this dot f on the top. top. So this is e2 squared times the vector e1 minus e1 dot e2 times the vector e2 over e1 squared times e2 squared minus e1 dot e2 squared all dot product with f. So I took the dot product with f and pulled it out and everything else. The numerator is a vector, the denominator is a scalar. And we can write that as mu beta times dot f, where mu beta is this fraction here. So in the end, what we end up with for the computation is, note that mu beta depends only on e1 and e2. It doesn't depend on f at all. So mu beta is fixed. for a fixed triangle. So this is the kind of thing that can be pre-computed for the triangle and saved. And then the very centric coordinates give us just a single dot product with the difference of u and x gives us the beta value for the very centric coordinates. Similar formulas work for alpha and gamma. So. This is the method. It's a little bit complex. Obviously, the formula is complicated to write out. It's got a lot of symmetries, however. And uh, it's ideal for computer computation because you can pre-compute the mu beta value and just do a single dot product. There is another way to define mu beta instead of this complicated formula. We could go back to this formula here and say that mu beta is m over m dot e1, because we have that vector dot f up here. This could be an easier way to do hand computations. It also shows that mu beta is in the same direction of m. So mu beta is pointing perpendicularly to the edge e2. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.